Daniel, as we have said before, forms the template for the book of Revelation. Now, if you study Daniel 7, you'll see that the attributes given there will be taken up again in Revelation 13. So the same system will be described in a different format in Revelation chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now the beast of Revelation 13 is a conglomerate of what we had in Daniel chapter 7. There are various aspects surrounding this animal. It has the head of a lion, the mouth of a lion. Now lion, the lion represented Babylon in Daniel chapter 7. Then it has the feet of a bear, and the bear represented Medo-Persia. And then it has the body of this leopard, and the leopard represents Greece in Daniel chapter 7. And then it has the ten horns and these seven heads, and this, these ten horns represent uh, the ten kingdoms that we have in terms of the creatures in Daniel chapter 7, and the toes of the statue in Daniel chapter 2. So this is a conglomerate beast having components, philosophies if you like, of Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and uh, Babylon. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, it therefore has Greece in it, and uh, the Roman church certainly has uh, the philosophy of the Greeks in it because it uh, supports Aristotle and all of these great philosophers. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Does Rome have Medo-Persian philosophy? Absolutely. Mithraism is the main thrust of the religion. It even has the triple crown which comes from Medo-Persia. And the mouth was the, the mouth of the lion is the Babylonian religion of Isis and Osiris, of Baal and Ashtoreth, are all these religions embodied in it? The answer is yes. But the sad story is that the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And the dragon is none other than the devil. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So that is the 1,260 year period, 538 to 1798. One of the heads seemed to have a mortal wound. So in this time period, it seems to die, but it doesn't really die. It actually goes underground. But as a beast, it dies because it loses political power. And then that political power will be given back and there is a resurrection of this beast. This is what the Bible is saying. So in 1798, Bertier entered Rome on the 10th of February 1798 and proclaimed the Republic, thus fulfilling this prophecy to the letter. Half of Europe thought Napoleon's veto would be obeyed and that with the Pope, the papacy was dead. Modern papacy, Reverend Joseph Rickabees. So, exactly 1,260 days. The murder of a Frenchman in Rome in 1798 gave the French the excuse to enter. Church history says, and they carried him off into exile, the Pope and the beast received a mortal wound. And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. It's interesting, the papacy had received a mortal wound and became insignificant in the eyes of men. But in 1929, the smallest state in the world was once again established. So here was something that had received a wound, and now it rose again. So in 1929, Gaspari signed the Lateran Treaty, and the Vatican States came back into existence. And the San Francisco Chronicle said Mussolini and Gaspari sign historic Roman pact 
The Roman question tonight was a thing of the past and the Vatican was at peace with Italy in affixing the autographs to the memorable document healing the wound. It's like they're quoting from the Bible. Extreme cordiality was displayed on both sides. Fascinating story. So a power seemed to have a mortal wound and then rose again. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now surely that's not possible. Not everybody's going to follow Catholicism, or are they? And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And they worshipped the dragon. So if you follow the system, unwittingly, you are actually worshipping the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Because it is a deception. Jesus Christ has been replaced by this Antichristos system, something in the place of Jesus Christ, and they worship the beast. So if we worship the system, we're actually worshiping the dragon. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So this religious political entity would blaspheme God, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Revelation 13 verse 5. So it would do this openly, publicly, for those forty-two prophetic months. Forty-two months, forty-two times thirty, one thousand two hundred and sixty days, a day for a year. I've given you a day for your year. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That is a prophetic statement. This system will control how much of the world? All of it. All of it. So power was given over the saints during the 1260 year period. But this power would control the whole world. 